now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Jimmy Stewart starring as the six-shooter in an episode of the one-year series from 68 years ago, June 3rd, 1954, Silver Threads. And we thank you for tuning in on this TGI Friday, third day of June, 154th day of the year, 211 days remaining until we get to 2022. President John Adams took up residence in Washington in a tavern on the state in 1800, the White House not yet completed. The uh, traditional founding of Kansas City, Missouri, on this date in 1850. This was the date on which it was first incorporated by Jackson County, Missouri, as the City of Kansas. The poem Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer, published in the San Francisco Examiner in 1888. The Reserve Officer Training Corps, established by Congress in 1916. The National Defense Act signed into law in 1916 also increased the size of the National Guard by 450,000 men. The Duke of Windsor married the uh, uh, divorcee Wallace Simpson in 1937. Dragnet premiering on NBC Radio in 1949, that first program apparently lost to the ages. The launch of Gemini 4 in 1965, the first multi-day space mission by a NASA crew. For 21 minutes on this date in 1965, Edward H. White floated free outside the space vehicle for the first time. Get back in. Okay. I don't know. We're coming over the left, the left end. We want you to come back in now. Roger. Right, we've been trying to talk to you for a while here. Now back in. Come on. The first spacewalk on this date in 1965. The government of China sending troops to force protesters out of Tiananmen Square in 1989 after seven weeks of occupation. The trial of U.S. Army Private Chelsea Manning for leaking classified materials to WikiLeaks began on this date in 2013 in Fort Meade, Maryland. And it was on this date in 2017, eight people murdered, dozens of civilians wounded, by an Islamic terrorist uh, driving a van in London. Passing away on this date, uh, Pope John the Twenty-Third, pro wrestler Dory Funk Sr., Ozzy Nelson of Ozzy and Harriet fame, the Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, the Iranian Shiite leader, actor Robert Morley, Dennis James, who was a wonderful early television host and in fact was hosting into the 70s. Uh, Anthony Quinn, the actor, also actors David Carradine and Rue McClanahan of the Golden Girls, James Arness, television's Matt Dillon, Andrew Gold, the man who sang about the lonely boy, Muhammad Ali, and passing away just last year, attorney F. Lee Bailey. This is the birth date of Confederate States of America President Jefferson Davis, the only one. Actor Maurice Evans, tenor Jan Pierce, dancer Josephine Baker, actress Ellen Corby, best remembered for her role in The Waltons, Paulette Goddard, Leo Gorsi, Lily St. Cyr, the dancer, ecstasiast is what they called it, you know, uh, Colleen Dewhurst, the actress, also Tony Curtis, poet Allen Ginsberg, Boots Randolph, the man who did Yakety Sax. And uh, this is also the birth date of Chuck Barris, the game show host. The Gong. He's best known for TV uh, as the Gong Show, but he also created one of the people who, behind the creation of the Newlywed Game. Also, actor Edward Winter and Curtis Mayfield, fine musician. Singer Eddie Holman is 76. Hey there, lonely girl. Uh, Susie Quattro was Leather Tuscadero on Happy Days and also had a hit, Stumbling In. Susie Quattro, 72 today. 71 years old, Denise Williams, who did Let's Hear It for the Boy on Footloose and had another big hit that I dearly enjoyed, Free. Denise Williams, 71. Uh, Singer-songwriter Dan Hill, 68. And Anderson Cooper, 
from uh, CNN is 55. Those some of the people celebrating the third day of June as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday. Hi, we're the four freshmen. And we just want to say happy birthday to you. From 68 years ago, June 3rd, 1954, Jimmy Stewart as the Six Shooter here on this Friday Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. You ever make a change and then think, why didn't I do this years ago? Well, that's how people feel about switching to MediShare for their health care, especially now with inflation the way it is. People are very happy with the savings. Most families save about $500 a month when they switch. It's a huge help when prices are going up so fast in so many other areas. And MediShare's customer satisfaction rate is double that of health insurance. It's just a different experience, and people really like that. MediShare is an alternative to health insurance. It's a community of Christians who share each other's health care bills, and it's been going strong for over 25 years. It really is the gold standard, the most trusted name in health care sharing. Find out why people love it. Find out why they rave about the customer service and find out how good it feels to save some money right now. They're super easy to talk to. Here's the number. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. The Six Shooter was what a lot of people thought NBC rolling the dice. One big last chance to roll out a new show. Now, it's hard to say that the Six Shooter failed because it didn't really have an opportunity to succeed. It got moved times, several times, and if you enjoyed the show, it was hard to find out when it was going to be on. Quite frankly, NBC would give up on uh, a lot of its stuff because its prime listening time was weekends, and weekends became a part of NBC Monitor. That became the big thing and what would take NBC's network radio operations to the next level, not drama. Okay, let's get rolling here with an episode of The Six Shooter, Jimmy Stewart, June 3rd, 1954, Silver Threads. James Stewart as The Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the sick shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the sick shooter. A transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. We'll be turning in here, Michael. Huh? As long as they're going into town anyway, we can be seeing whether they're make you anything Homer Dante is needing. Well, we got enough to do pa just getting the things we need for ourselves. Oh, now, what kind of a neighbor are you, Michael O'Hara? We'll turn in, I said. Okay, okay. Uh, that's one thing that you'll have to be learning. A man can't live by himself. And there's many a time Mr. Dante has done us a favor. Yeah, sure, sure. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mr. Dante! It's Sean O'Hara, Mr. Dante! I don't see no sign of him. Maybe he's gone into town himself. Uh, uh, oh, don't oh, be in such oh. a hurry now. The least we can do is... Oh. Ah, Mike, would you listen now? Huh? Them cows. There's something the matter with Mr. Danfield's cows. I reckon they're hungry, Pa. That's what it sounds like to me. Ah, yeah, that's more than hunger. The trouble in them animals. Uh, uh, come on, boy. Uh, now, have a look. Oh, now, Pa, wait. Michael. All right. <laughs> Like as not, Mr. Danfield ain't going to appreciate us butting into his affairs. He's always been able to run this farm without look any... Look there, help. would huh? you look? Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, they've not been milked, that's what it is. The sun's in the middle of the sky and they've not been milked. Yeah. I thought you there was something wrong here. I felt it the minute we pulled up in the yard, so I did. 
Maybe Mr. Danfield's sick. Maybe that's it, huh? Well, sure, and I hope that's all it is. But when I get one of these foreboding feelings, well... Uh... Mr. Danfield! Well, try it, Paul. See if it's locked. Oh, no, I don't know. It doesn't seem right to enter another man's house when he's not... for his own sake, ain't it? Here. If he ain't home, we'll leave him a note explaining the way... Paul. Well, what is it, Mike? Over there. Across the room by the sofa. Michael, that's Mr. Danfield. Oh, he has been shot bad, real bad. Uh, but there's the spark of life left into him. Would you get the doctor, Michael, as fast as you can, and I'll stay here till you yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah, sure, boss. Uh, sure. And the sheriff, too, the sheriff. You best bring the sheriff. Yep. That poor Mr. Dunfield. I'd expected to reach Pearl City before nightfall, but it looked like I'd been a mite optimistic. The sky had already lost most of its color, and I still had a good 15 miles to go, so I slowed Scar down to a walk. Easy, boy, easy. Oh, that's it. Uh, I started looking around for a place to make camp. It didn't really much matter when I got to town. And the spring roundups were sure to be over, and a day or two, one way or the other, wouldn't make any difference about my finding a summer job. And besides being out in the rain for another night, I'd probably get a lot more sleep than I would in any of those hotel beds. And, well, about a mile further on, I, I spotted a little flicker of light behind a couple of gray-green boulders, and when I rode up closer, I heard somebody singing, and playing a guitar. Ah. Oh, looked like I wasn't the only one in the range that night. Oh, howdy. Howdy. Wow, that sounds real pleasant. Mind if I use your fire for a spell? You're more than welcome to it, mister. Climb down from your horse and make yourself at home. Ah. Well, thanks very much. I'm heating up some beans. It's plenty for both of us. Well, that's mighty considerate of you, but I've got some grub of on here. Well, there's no point in wasting it, is there? Like I said, I got more than enough here. That is, if you don't mind eating beans. No, no, no. I reckon that's what I'm carrying, too. My name's Ponsett, Britt Ponsett. Well, I'll be done. Huh? I sure heard about you, Mr. Ponsett. And that gun of yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Toby Yeager. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Yeager. Here, just let me get my guitar out of your way so you can sit down. Oh, thanks. Oh, I hope I didn't interrupt your singing. That sounded real pretty. Well, it just sort of helps to pass the time, especially when I'm alone. Mm-hmm. You care to try a tune, Mr. Ponsett? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not much of a singer. You just go right ahead. Well... Ain't anybody going to hear us, except in a few coyotes, and they're not likely to be very critical. What do you say? Shall we give our vocal cords a little exercise while we're waiting for them beans to heat up? Well, as I said... Come on, now. I, you know, I like that third voice. Oh, beat the drum slowly and play the pipe lowly. Come on, Mr. Ponson. Play the dead march as you carry me along. Take, Take me to, to the green valley where lay the sod o'er me. For I'm a young cowboy and know I done wrong. <laughs> well, uh, George, sounds like we were mistaken about those coyotes. Did you, you hear them? This is one of their favorites. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> How about you providing some music now? Oh, me? No. Here's the guitar. No, no. no I, I'm sorry. I just don't play at all. Oh, come on. You're joshing me, Ponsett. No, no, no. I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about it. Well, well, most any cowboy can get a tune out of a guitar. Maybe so. Maybe so. But it just seems like I never had much of an ear for music. You don't need no ear. Here, come on. Let me show you. Huh? Now, you just watch my fingers. Yeah. You see, there's nothing to it. Well... Yeah, that's simple enough, ain't it? Well, I... Now, I'll that's... tell you what I'll do. I'll make the chords, and you do the strumming. Oh, uh, oh, all yeah, right. you go ahead. 
Uh, go ahead and strum. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're doing fine. Oh. That's just fine. <laughs> the strumming part's a little easier than the cordon, though. Isn't oh, it? it's all easy once you get the hang of it. Now, give me your left hand. How's that? Your left what? hand. I'll, I'll put your fingers where they belong for the first chord. I see now. Yeah, yeah. There. Okay, strum. Well, I, now let's see. All right, all right. Uh, here's the next chord. See, see now. Uh-huh. Now here, here's the third one. There. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Yeah, you know, yeah, this kind of fun. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. Now you do them yourself. What? Those three chords I just taught you. Oh, you mean uh, you do them all alone? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Uh, well, uh. Now, this contraption just isn't for me. Oh, you mustn't give up yet. A little more practice, you'd be a first-rate guitar player. No, I was ma- mighty flattering, Jaeger, but I think I'd better stick to Muhammad. Well. Now, you go right ahead. Now, play some more. Now, that, that tune you were trying to teach me, that sounds real pretty. You mean this one? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever heard that before, have I? Oh, it's brand new. Folks back east are all singing it, but it ain't got this far west yet. Oh, I say, are you from the east? No, no. Utah's my home. But I spent a couple of months in Chicago last winter. That's where I picked up this tune. I say. Uh, I sure didn't cotton to city life, Mr. Ponson. I headed back this way first chance I got. Been laying track for the Santa Fe. That's all? Hmm? Line reaches Pearl City now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. yeah. But they had to stop there for a spell on account of some legal ruckus about the right of way. So I took my pay, bought myself that mare over yonder and moseyed on. Mm hmm. I don't know what it is about this song. Once you hear it, it, it just sort of sticks with you. Yeah, yeah, it does. Silver Threads Among the Gold. That's the title. Darling, I am growing old Silver threads among the gold Shine upon my brow today Life is fading fast away But, my darling, you will be, will be Always young and fair to me Yes, my darling, you will be Always young and fair to me Oh, that's real nice, Jaeger. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Oh, there they are again. He's <laughs> got some more verses, but that's the only one I can remember. Do you care to join in? <laughs> no, no, I think I've bothered the coyotes enough for one evening. <laughs> well, it looks like them beans are getting hot. I suppose we can interrupt our concert until after supper. Probably sound better on a full stomach, anyhow. No, oh, I don't know, Jaeger. In my case, I reckon it wouldn't make much difference. <laughs> well, we had our fill of beans, and then Jaeger picked up his guitar again. It's more singing. I... Oh, what with the music and all, I felt kind of sleepy, so I spread out my bedroll and. Last thing I remember is hearing that guitar as I dropped off. The next morning after we had breakfast, Jaeger headed on south and I swung north toward Pearl City. A couple of hours later, I was riding past the farms just this side of town. I noticed a buggy and four or five horses pulled up in Homer Danfield's front yard. Hmm. Homer had always lived alone ever since I could remember. He never had been much of a man for company either, so I turned off the road into the lane leading to the house. Sean O'Hara was sitting on the steps whittling. On the size of the pile of shavings at his feet, figured he'd been doing it for quite a spell. Whoa, whoa, Scott, whoa, whoa. Oh, Sean? Huh? 
Ah, Mr. Melvin May, Rick Ponsett. Oh, why, for goodness sake, Mr. Ponsett, I never had no idea you was in these parts. Lord, it be a miracle you come. Oh, what's, what are you talking about, Sean? Oh, it's a terrible thing that's happened to Homer Dunfield. What? what? Him, him lying in there right now, hovering between life and death, so he is. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. He's pretty sick, huh? He's been shot, Mr. Ponsett. A big hole right over his chest. Is that so? Uh, uh, it was along about noontime yesterday when we found him, Miss Son Michael and myself. Oh, that poor man. Well, well, just what happened, Sean? Well, now, if you ask me, it was a thief who done it. Sure, and from the looks of his house, somebody turned things every which way searching for valuables. And besides, anybody who knew Homer Donfield, anybody from around Pearl City, that is, they'd have no call to try to kill him. He was a well-liked man, Mr. Ponce. Well, he sure was, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, the doctor's staying with him almost 24 hours now. And Sheriff Gentle, too. But you know, the poor Homer has not breathed a conscious breath during the whole day and the night that followed. Yeah, and like as not, he'll never be able to tell us just exactly what... Oh, hello, Sheriff. Huh? Oh, howdy, Briff. Where'd you come from? Oh, just passed through on the way to town. And Sean's been telling me about Homer. Uh-huh. Yeah, has there been any improvement, Sheriff? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it an improvement. He did come, too, for a couple of minutes. Oh? You don't see. Yes, he told me what he could. But I'm afraid it won't do much good. June 3rd, 1954, Jimmy Stewart as the six-shooter on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. A look at the news from 68 years ago today comes up following these important messages. Stay tuned. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily? without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets. It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us. We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, call right now to learn more about your risk free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk free offer. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. That's 800 738 5332. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. And you're listening to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Yes, that's me. And an episode of The Six Shooter starring Jimmy Stewart as it was originally broadcast Thursday, June 3rd, 1954. In the newspapers of that Thursday, 68 years ago, these were some of the headlines. (laughs) President Eisenhower asserting the supremacy of the executive branch in fighting communism said yesterday the administration has rolled up an impressive record in that field uh, quietly and relentlessly and under due process of law. Barring questions about Senator McCarthy, Eisenhower issued at a crowded news conference a 16-month record of the blows executive agencies have aimed at communism. 
These included convictions and indictments of red leaders, deportations, and expansion of the list of subversive organizations. The president reaffirmed his backing of Attorney General Brownwell's statement of last week, which accused McCarthy of trying to set himself above the laws of our land in inviting secret data from government workers. But Eisenhower ruled out Newsman's questions about the conflict between the administration and McCarthy. He asserted he has said his last word on that subject unless something happens that makes him think he has to say something more. Meanwhile, Army Counsel Joseph N. Welch joined forces with Democrat senators yesterday in a sudden determined campaign to make Senator Joseph McCarthy turn over to the FBI or Secretary of Defense Wilson the names of 130 alleged communists whom McCarthy said are in U.S. defense plants. But McCarthy stuck to his stand that the way to get these purported Reds out of strategic factories is for his investigative committee to hold public hearings and expose them. Senator McCarthy said yesterday communists have infiltrated the elite Central Intelligence Agency, charges which CIA Chief Alan W. Dulles promptly declared were false. President Eisenhower said firmly yesterday in his press conference he has by no means decided whether to ask Congress for authority to intervene in red-threatened Southeast Asia. He disclosed at that news conference that his top advisors occasionally have discussed the possibility of a White House resolution asking Congress to permit such action. Top diplomatic officials said this possibility was being seriously considered, but a final decision must await pledges by Britain and other friendly governments to join the U.S. in a united front to save Indochina. The United States is assembling another shipment of arms for Honduras and Nicaragua to counter any threats posed by the recent communist arms shipments to Guatemala. A Defense Department spokesman said the military aid will be shipped from New Orleans in four to six weeks to supplement the arms flown to the two Central American countries last month. In Birmingham, Alabama, voters gave overwhelming approval to a segregation ordinance banning mixed play by Negroes and white persons. A count of the city's 179 boxes gave 16,600 votes for the new ordinance and 5,800 votes against. The new law prohibits Negroes and white persons from competing together in games of cards, dice, dominoes, checkers, softball, basketball, baseball, football, golf, and track, and also bans any mingling of the races at swimming pools, beaches, lakes, and ponds. The city commission had voted several months ago to permit white and Negro professional players to engage in baseball and football games. Negro leaders are expected to take the new ordinance in the federal court, but no plans were announced for any immediate action. Meanwhile, Senator James O. Eastland, the Democrat of Mississippi, says Mississippi will continue to have segregation in public schools regardless of the wishes and we are quoting here the wishes of racial demagogues and troublemakers. Eastland termed as very ill-advised the threats made by Negro leaders to bring suits to end school segregation. And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Thursday, June 3rd, 1954, on your radio, Jimmy Stewart is the six shooter, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The fellow broke in night before last, along about midnight. He was a stranger. Homer had never seen him before. And he didn't get a very good look at him either. Well, he was trying to rob Mr. Dunfield. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it was. Uh-huh. Homer heard him prowling around in the parlor and come downstairs. The fellow let fly with a slug, caught Homer right under the shoulder. Uh, he's lost a lot of blood. The doc thinks maybe one of his lungs is nicked too. Yeah, no, that sure is too bad. Yeah. You know. Well, not much I can do without a description, evidence. Uh, sure, no one couldn't he tell you anything at all about the man? No, as far as Homer can recollect, he was medium height, medium build. That's about all. Except for the song he was singing. The song? Yeah. Homer didn't pass out right after he was shot, not entirely. He remembers hearing the fellow searching around and uh, humming and singing to himself while he was at it. Something about silver and gold and getting old. Homer ain't too clear in his own mind, and... Well, as far as I can tell, it's a song I never heard before. You ever hear it, Sean? 
No, it don't sound familiar to me, Sheriff. What about you, Britt? Britt? I've heard it, Sheriff. Huh? At least I've heard something mighty similar. Mighty similar. We'll return to James Stewart as the sick shooter in just a moment. From 68 years ago, June 3rd, 1954, Jimmy Stewart as the Six Shooter. On this Friday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. We'll start this weekend of Classic Radio Theater with another early episode of the West Coast Police Procedural, or as we used to call them, a cop show, Calling All Cars, from 87 years ago, June 4th, 1935, The Innocent Bride. A bank has been held up in Long Beach, and a Russian immigrant proposes marriage and spends lavishly. That's coming up on Saturday's Classic Radio Theater, but let's wrap up this Friday edition of The Six Shooter, starring Jimmy Stewart from 68 years ago, June 3rd, 1954. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponson. Well, I told Sheriff Gentle about running into Toby Yeager and his guitar, about the tune Toby tried to teach me. Of course, that didn't prove that Yeager had anything to do with shooting Homer Danfield, even though it was a new song. Well, like Toby said, it was popular back east, and there might be other folks who knew it out west, too. But Yeager had been around Pearl City lately. He told me so himself. He was a medium-sized man and a stranger. So I gave the sheriff all the details I could remember. Yeah. Well, it sure ain't much to go on, but it's something. I reckon I've got to get started. Hmm? Tell you the truth, Britt. The doctor don't figure Homer will last more than another day or two. And if we don't get this Yeager fellow back before he... Well, you're saying that he sung a certain song. That ain't going to convict him of murder. No, no, of course not. Well, let's go. Well, you don't need me, Sheriff. I need somebody to pick up this fellow's trail and point him out to me, don't I? Well, I could tell you. Oh, we're just wasting time, Britt. If we're going after this man, let's get started. All right, all right, Sheriff. All right. It took us a couple hours to ride back to the place where Jaeger and I had camped for the night. When we'd split up, he said he was heading south, so the sheriff and I looked around for his trail that way. We didn't have too much trouble finding it, and there was only one thing. He hadn't gone south, leastwise not for very long. As soon as he hit Little Creek, a mile or so from the camp, he turned west towards Saddle Mountain. We were able to make pretty good time the rest of the day, and that trail didn't look like he was in too much of a hurry, so I figured maybe we'd been gaining on him. We didn't stop for supper. We just kept right on going. And even after nightfall, there was enough moon so we could still make out his tracks. Well, about 9 o'clock, we were moving through the pass between Saddle Mountain and Porcupine Peak. We were getting pretty high up, too. Not very many trees, just a scrub pine every once in a while. Easy scrub. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Hold up a minute, Sheriff. Huh? I... I thought I heard something. Huh. No, I guess it was wrong. Or maybe... Maybe the wind's changed. Or my, here. No, no. There it is again. You hear it? You hear it? Yeah. Yeah, he must be up there. Right around that bend. Think we'd better move in on foot? Yeah, uh-huh. I... I rode up on him last night. He seemed tame enough. Well, okay. Hello, Jaeger. Why, well, uh, Mr. Ponce, thought you was heading another way. Yeah, I sort of changed my mind. Come back for another guitar lesson, huh? No, not exactly. Jaeger, this is Cleet Gentle from Pearl City. Howdy, Mr. Gentle. You, uh... Howdy. You two never met up before, Jaeger, while you were working in Pearl City. No? No, not that I recollect. Why? Mr. Gentle's the sheriff there. Sheriff? That's right. Well, I was only in town for a few days, and I was sort of on my good behavior. At least was, uh, I never had no run-in with the law. Yeah. There's something I can do for you, gents? Jaeger, a fellow was shot the other day. Shot and robbed. Farmer just outside of town. Oh? He didn't recognize the man who did it. He remembers one thing about him, though. A song he was singing. Well, I... I reckon I ain't the only man that gives out with a song once in a while, am I? No. No, but this particular song... Well, it's the one you played for me last night. <laughs> I played a lot of songs for you last night, Mr. Ponce. Silver Threads Among the Gold. And that was the name of it. Well? You said it was a new tune, as I recall. You picked it up back east. Did I? Yeah. Well, ain't you uh, kind of jumping to conclusions, Mr. Ponson? Nobody's accusing you of anything, Yeager. Well, then just what is it you want? I want you to come back to Pearl City with me. Let Homer Danfield take a good look at you and see if he can identify you. Danfield? Yeah, that's the man that was shot. He's still alive, huh? Do you think he was dead, Yeager? Oh, I, I didn't think nothing about it one way or the other. How much money you got with you? Who? Forty, fifty dollars. Mind showing it to me? <laughs> Money looks all the same, don't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here. Yeah. 20, 30, 40, 45, 48. 48 dollars. Well, that's what I said, about 50 bucks. That's what Mr. Danfield had stolen from his China cabinet. About 50 dollars. The money's mine. I was working for the Santa Fe. They just paid me off the other day. You're wearing a gun, I see. Well, so are you. So is Ponce. I'll take it. Sure. All right, Jaeger. Let's go. You want to get started right now? As soon as you're ready. It'll take me a couple of minutes to get my pack together and my horse saddled. Well, I'll give you a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ponce. Yeah, here. Would you mind fastening this onto the back of my saddle? I sure wouldn't want to go off and leave my guitar behind. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it for you. Well, we rode all night, the three of us. Nobody did much talking, but every once in a while, Jaeger had let loose with some humming and singing. He sure didn't seem very worried about what had happened when he came face to face with Danfield. I, I couldn't make up my mind. Maybe it was just that he had a clear conscience, or maybe he was putting up a good front for our benefit. Anyway, along about 6 o'clock in the morning, we were riding past the O'Hara farm. That meant we were almost there. Danfield's place would be next. Sean O'Hara came running out of the barn carrying a pail of milk. And when he saw us, he set the milk down and gave a holler. And... Sheriff Jensen, hold up a minute, Sheriff. Oh, no, go there. Oh, oh, oh Scar. Morning, Sean. Ah, uh-huh. aha. So you found the fellow you were looking for, I think. Yeah, yeah, we found him. Well, it's sure too bad you went to all this trouble. Ah, uh-huh. what do you mean? Uh, poor Mr. Dunfield. He is no longer with us. No. He passed away a little before midnight last night. God rest his soul. Oh. Tell me, Sean, did he say anything more before he died? No, Sheriff, not a word. You see. Uh, well. Well? 
Looks like you won't have no more use for me, Sheriff. You ain't gonna prefer charges of murder just on account of the song I happen to sing to Ponsard, are you? Well, well, I guess he's right, Sheriff. Yeah. All right, Jager. Here's your money and your gun. Thank you. Well, so long, James. Come on, boy. Jager. Yeah? I don't know whether you had anything to do with this or not. I guess nobody will ever know for certain. Except you. I guess that's so. But you'll know it, Jaeger. And if you did it all the rest of your life, you'll know it. That all you want to tell me, Ponce? That's all. Well, so long. What do you think, Britt? Did he do it? Uh, Sheriff, I just don't know. Uh, there's some coffee in the kitchen if you'd be liking a cup. Thanks, Sean, but I'd better get in town. Uh-huh. Hey, well, how about you, Mr. Ponsett? Uh, yeah, I... I reckon I could use a cup of coffee. Well, I'll be seeing you. Take it easy. Sure. Sorry you had that ride for nothing, Britt. No, it's all right. I guess I brought it on myself. So long. The kitchen's door is around this way, Mr. Ponsett. No, that sure was a shame about Homer Dump. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Hey, boy, Pa. Oh, now it's about time you got up, young man. Uh, you, you remember Mr. Ponce, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Britt. I'm uh, just fine, Mike. Hey, what are you doing with Toby Yeager? Is he a friend of yours? Mm, no, not exactly. What, it, you know him, Mike? Oh, well, he was working over on the railroad. We met a couple of times. Played poker over at Red Pilpot's place. Now, Michael, I told you, you can't afford to be losing your money. Oh, to... I never lost, Pa. Not when Toby was in the game. Why, he's got the worst luck any man I ever played with. Take the other night. Railroad paid him off, and he lost every cent of it. Now, what night was that, Mike? Was that the night Homer Danfield was shot? Well, come to think of it, I guess it was. I see. I see. All right, I think maybe I'll skip that coffee for the time being, Sean. Thanks anyway. Jaeger? Jaeger? Huh? Oh. What is it now, Ponson? Let you and me go into town, huh? What for? Easy, go, easy. That forty-eight dollars you're carrying—that isn't Santa Fe money. What do you mean? You lost your pay the other night in a poker game, all of it. Oh, where'd you get the forty-eight dollars, Jager? What might be kind of hard to explain, Ponson? It sure would. Looks like you was wrong, don't it? Huh? Well, you said if. I was a fellow who shot him. Nobody'd know it, except me. You shot him, huh? Sure. Well, then I was wrong. Maybe we'd better go back to Pearl City, huh? Sure. Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Ben Wright, Burt Holland, Will Wright, and Barney Phillips, who played Toby. The guitarist was Bob Bain. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. 
From June 3rd, 1954, The Six Shooter, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thank you for making us a part of your Friday. Would you do me a favor and thank this radio station and support their advertisers? It is their kindness and courtesy that allow us to be with you each and every time we roll around here on your favorite station. If you miss a day on this station, you do not have to miss a single show. They're available through Spreaker, through Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Or go to my webpage, classicradio.stream, classicradio.stream. You can stream our shows. You can learn more about Classic Radio Collecting. You can contact me there. You can even buy me a, a nice cold Dr. Pepper. You can do that if you'd like to. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Tell your friends that great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.